pretty interesting article I came across on my Twitter timeline. It was sh shared by the journalist, uh, you know, Ben Norton, who writes for the uh, Gray Zone. And the title, it's from cons consor Consortium News, Consortium News. Epstein case documentaries won't touch tales of intel ties for Jeffrey Epstein. And then the sub subheading, two new documentaries on the Jeffrey Epstein affair delve into lurid details and give voice to his victims, but both scratch the surface of the political and intelligence dimensions of the scandal, writes Elizabeth Voss. Voss. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. I'll link the article in the description box down below. And yeah, so the, I've seen one of the documentaries. There's one on Netflix, and um, yeah, I mean, I guess check it out if if you, if you want to. But as she correctly points out, they don't delve into hardly that I remember any of his ties to governments or you know intelligence. And I mean that it's not surprising. But, um, you know, a little concerning, obviously, because I feel like these documentaries should paint as wide of a picture as possible about Epstein and his, his involvement in, the, in these things. Investigation Discovery premiered a three-hour special, Who Killed Jeffrey Epstein, on May 31st, the first segment in a three-part series. Why is it not letting me highlight? Oh, well. That focused on Epstein's August two, 2019 death in federal custody. The series addresses Epstein's alleged co-conspirator, Ghislaine Maxwell, his links with billionaire Leslie Wexner, the founder of the Victoria's Secret clothing line, and others, as well as the non-prosecution deal he was given that was in Florida by former Labor, uh, Secretary of Labor Alex Acosta, who was the um, what, state's, state's attorney at the time, U.S. District Attorney. The special followed on the heels of Netflix release Jeffrey Epstein, Filthy Rich, the one I was talking about, a miniseries that draws on the book, the same name by James Patterson. Promotional pr material for Who Killed Jeffrey Epstein promises that exclusive interviews and in-depth investigations will reveal new clues about the seedy underworld, privileged life, and controversial death. The three-hour special looks to answer the questions surrounding the death of this enigmatic figure. Netflix, Netflix billed its series this way. Stories from Survivors, fearless docuseries examining how convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein uses wealth and power to carry out his abuses. Neither documentary, however, deals at all with Epstein's suspected ties to the world of intelligence. Hmm. Absent are both from both are Maxwell's reported links to is Israeli intelligence through her father, Robert Maxwell, former owner of the New York Daily News and the Mirror newspaper in London. Maxwell essentially received a state funeral in Israel and was buried on the Mount of Olives after he mysteriously fell off his yacht in 1991 in the Atlantic Ocean. In an interview with the Consortium News, former Israeli intelligence officer Ari ben Menashe said Epstein did not work with Mossad. Mil military intelligence was who he is working with, said Banashi. Big difference, he said. He never worked with Mossad, and Robert Maxwell never did either. It was military intelligence. Get out of there. Hopefully this battery doesn't die. Ben Banashi claimed Robert Maxwell, again, that's Ghislaine Maxwell's father. Ghislaine Maxwell um, was basically played a huge part in, in getting these girls and kind of grooming them for Epstein and just involved in this whole disgusting, you know, episode with Epstein. Um, ben Menashe claimed Robert Maxwell was Epstein's tie-over. Robert Maxwell was the conduit in the Iran-Contra scandal, the financial conduit in Epstein. Dead Men Tell No Tales, a book published in December. Ben Menashe is quoted as saying he worked with Robert Maxwell, who introduced, who introduced his daughter and Epstein to Israeli intelligence, after which they engaged in blackmail operation for Israel. Epstein was taking photos of politicians' fucking 14-year-old girls, if you want to get it straight. They, Epstein and Maxwell, would just blackmail people. They would just blackmail people like that, he says in the book. Ben Menashe also claims that Robert Maxwell had attempted to blackmail Mossad. He really lost his compass once he started playing these games with people. Uh, I mean, wonder why he maybe fell off his yacht mysteriously. Is that Prince Andrew? Mm -hmm. 
which has been uh, had been tied to all of this. About a week after both documentaries premiered, the U.S. Department of Justice approached the U.K.'s Home Office requesting that Prince Andrew ask, answer questions in the U.K. over his links to Epstein, the Marie reported. If he refuses, the paper said U.S. prosecutors could ask that he be brought to a British court to respond to other questions. Andrew's lawyer said he has three times agreed to be questioned by U.S. authorities, but it is not known if Andrew attached conditions such as immunity. Both documentaries mention Prince Andrew in the context of allegations about him from one of Epstein's victims, Virginia Roberts Guffrey, Guffrey, but neither film goes into much detail about Andrew's role in the Epstein operation, which Benashi said was to lure powerful men into Epstein's orbit. One of the things that are really key to this is that he, Epstein, befriended a very useful idiot called Prince Andrew, Ben Menashe told CNN. To CNN. Now, what really happened was that Prince Andrew, with nothing to do, was having fun with this. And Prince Andrew brings in the fancy people, invites them to play golf, and then takes them out for fun. Then Epstein shows up, and these piece of people are basically, basically blackmailed. The only person that can talk, probably knows quite a bit, is the great prince, Ben Menashe said. He was with him, Epstein, all the time. I really don't know what his future is going to be like either. Since a number of influential figures were named a lawsuit filed by Guffrey against Ghislaine Maxwell the, defer the day before Epstein was found dead in his federal prison cell in New York, Ben Menashe said, I'm starting to think that lawsuit was his death sentence because people didn't want to be named. That's my guess. It's just a guess. Obviously, somebody decided he had to go. Epstein's death was ruled a suicide by New York's chief medical examiner. A pathologist hired by Epstein's brother said it was a homicide. Just before Ben Menashe spoke to Consortium News on Monday, he said he had received an angry telephone call from Israeli's Channel 13 television, television station. They called me and they went wild. What? You believe Israel would use little girls? You're saying that? You're insulting the nation. You're making an athema us anathema around the world. I said the truth is the truth, and Jeffrey Epstein's story is something that nobody wanted to hear. He was working with the Israelis. He was working with Maxwell, Ben Menashe said. He added, It's a very bad story, and I can see why the Israelis are so concerned about it. I believe Channel 13 were expressing anger. I believe this was a message. I don't like messages like that. It has to do with the timing and these stories coming out about Epstein. They are starting to become anathema to the world. This adds to it, the Epstein story, Victims' Voices. The Netflix, uh, the Netflix and Investigation Discovery Productions allow survivors to recount their experiences in interviews as well as tape police recordings and focus on the sweetheart plea deal provided to Epstein by former Trump Labor Secretary Alexander Acosta during Acosta's tenure as U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of Florida. Each series outlines Epstein's relationships with Wexner, Maxwell, and a variety of elite figures. Investigation Discovery focuses on the controversy surrounding Epstein's death, while Netflix Filthy Rich man examines a second attempt to prosecute Epstein in the context of the Me Too movement. The Netflix series describes the initial investigation of Epstein as it shifted from the state to the federal level and airs allegations that Florida journalists uh, covering the story were threatened. Netflix also interviews psychologist Dr. Catherine Stamoulos, Stamoulos, especially in adolescent sexuality, who gives a description of Epstein's targeting and grooming young girls. Epstein survivor Giffrey later describes the film uh, being groomed to, to tolerate the exploitation and sex trafficking as part of a deranged family. It's a long article, and this battery is about to die. I'm not probably going to be able to get through all of it, but I will link it in the description box down below. Final section of the fourth episode of Netflix miniseries includes a survivor stating that this was not simply an Epstein operation, but an international sex trafficking ring that reached all the world. Epstein describes a very small piece in a huge network, but the documentary goes no further than that. As in the... Uh, Belgian Dutroux case, victims alleged that multiple abusers acted in concert with each other, using blackmail to keep each other in line. In both instances, authorities and the media portrayed the abuse as chiefly the product of an ab ab abhorrent lone predator. This wouldn't be the only time this happened, but this guy but this guy got way over his head, Benashi said, consortium, uh, told Consortium News. He probably was blackmailing too many people, too many powerful people, and then this is a story that Israel's wouldn't want to come out anyway. Thriving in murky waters. 
Another angle the documentaries did not approach was the environment which Epstein thrived like an algae bloom in stagnant water. That is, that is with a long history of child trafficking rings li linked with intelligence agencies, often with the aim of gathering black mater material. It was within this reality that Epstein appeared to be rendered untouchable. Omitting the intelligence aspect of Ep Epstein's history allows the establishment media to portray his case as mysterious and unsolvable aberration rather than perhaps a continuation of business as usual amongst those in power. The glaring refusal to address Epstein's intelligence involvement becomes clear when Investigation Discovery Netflix programs discuss the role of Acosta in securing Epstein because he said he was told that Epstein was connected to intelligence. Let's see what this article says. Epstein's sweetheart plea deal, but do not reference Acosta's wildly reported explanation as to why Acosta agreed to the deal. As reported by the Daily Beast, Acosta claimed he had cut the non-prosecution deal because he had been told that Epstein belonged to intelligence and to leave it alone. Independent journalist Whitney Webb, um, who's part of Net Press News, also another good independent news site, uh, has reported on Epstein's many ties with intelligence, telling, telling CN Live in August last year that there's evidence this included the CIA. Webb spoke about Iran-Contra links to Epstein via his and billionaire Wexner's efforts to relocate Southern Air Transport, formerly the CIA's Air America, from Florida to Ohio. What's significant here is that out of all the airlines in the United States, Wexner and Epstein choose the, the airline, the only airline that is outed publicly known at the time to be a CIA cutout. Out of all of the airlines that exist, that's the one they go for, she said. Webb also cited reporting by Nigel Rosser, a British journalist who wrote in the Evening Standard in, 2000, in 2001 that Epstein claimed he worked for the CIA in the 1990s. Investigation Discovery uh, and Netflix give lip service to Wexner's ties with Epstein, omitting that Wexner gave Epstein the largest private residence in New York essentially for free. Hmm, wonder why, huh? Investigation Discovery does not mention that the residence was extensively wired in surveillance equipment per web in the New York Times. James Patterson, before writing his book on Epstein Filthy Rich, on which his documentary by Netflix is based, wrote a mock. Uh, a novel, The President is Missing, with Bill Clinton, who is, of course, quite close to Epstein, along with Trump, uh, the Epstein scandal, so that definitely, in my opinion, raises some eyebrows well to consortium news. I think that one of the goals of this Netflix documentary is to basically imply that Epstein was the head of the operation now and that he is dead, all the activity has ceased. Webb said, if they had really acted, actually bothered to explore the intelligence angle, in some of the more obvious uh, fact, facts about the case, like like what Leslie Wexner's role, for example, it became clear that Epstein was really just more of a manager of this type of operation, and these activities continue. Webb said, and a main reason for avoiding discussion of the intelligence angle is that the mention of state sponsorship would lead for calls for accountability and open inquiry uh, into a history of sexual blackmail by intelligence agencies. Let's see if I can, hopefully my computer charger is plugged in, the lighting might not be as good over here, but we, we shall continue because this is uh, frankly really interesting and um, pretty important. Um, let's see. So if they had given superficial treatment of those ties, it would have exposed threads that if anyone had bothered to pull on a little bit, would start to unravel a lot of things that obviously these powerful people and institutions don't want to expose. I mean, for fuck's sake, he was friends with Clinton, with Bill Gates, with Trump, Prince Andrew. It looks like he was connected to Israeli military intelligence, possibly the CIA, and who knows how many more powerful people, intelligence agencies, or governments all around the world that he held water for. I mean, for fuck's sake. More than nine months since Epstein's death, no alleged Epstein co-conspirator has been arrested or charged with a crime despite reports of an active criminal investigation of Maxwell who has disappeared and multiple failed attempts 
of alleged Epstein victims to serve her with civil suits. The criminal case against him and all the evidence that was gathered against him as part of that will never be made public unless someone is charged, said Webb. So the fact that they're not charging anyone is quite telling. And the fact that the mainstream media isn't pushing back against that, I think is telling as well. The omissions of major aspects of the Epstein case by the media, specifically its links with the intelligence community, seems to be yet another example of a buffer between justice and those responsible for rendering Jeffrey Epstein untouchable. Wow. Pretty uh, insightful, if not disturbing article. I mean, I so like I said, I had watched the the Netflix miniseries, and I did notice, especially after reading this article, yes, that they didn't actually go after any of his Epstein's alleged ties to intelligence. And like this article pointed out, they totally <clears throat> omitted the part about how Acosta said that he was told to give Epstein the sweetheart deal because Epstein was tied to, um, you know, intelligence and just how the media and everybody is trying to sweep this, sweep this under the rug. And it's, it's disgusting. It's really, really disgusting and, and disturbing. And, I mean, I guess, like they were saying, if nobody actually is charged, then none of these records will be released. So we might actually never really know the full truth, the full truth of who is involved, who was, who was implicated, who was helping Epstein out, who was, you know, protecting him for so long to allow him to be able to, or who he had dirt on to allow him for, what, basically decades to run this, uh, child sex trafficking ring to run this sex trafficking ring to get away with all these crimes to allow all these other people to get away with these horrible and just just disgusting you know crimes against just these really you know vulnerable uh you know children and women it's just hugely hugely disgusting peace each other